fits in this little, um, it's, it's, it's supposed to be like a bowl, but he likes to lay in it. He thinks he fits in there. Uh, dude, you don't. You don't fit. Hey! Welcome to the 53rd episode of the Handmade by Lorelei podcast. I'm Lorelei, and this is my podcast about knitting and sometimes sewing. I'm coming at you from a very snowy upstate New York today. Today is Friday, whoop, whoop, December 22nd. And Christmas is in three days, as you can see behind me. I just finished my shopping yesterday, so I'm glad because it is very snowy today and supposed to be snowy and freezing rainy later this afternoon. So I'm glad I don't have to go anywhere because ew. If there is anything I hate worse, it's driving in the snow. I can't stand driving in the snow. And it's mostly because I don't trust any of the other drivers around me. I know I'm a very good driver in the snow, but I know that some people up here in upstate New York got their driver's licenses out of a Cracker Jack box because, hello, <laughs> it's not that hard. But for some reason, it's hard for some people. So, I want to stay home. <laughs> um, I even put fancy eyeshadow on for you today. So, you're welcome. Uh, I don't have any handmade things. This is handmade, but not by me. This is a necklace from... Jade Scott, who has since retired from making jewelry, uh, to follow her path uh, within the Jehovah's Witnesses. So this is uh, just a small example of things that she used to make back in the day. I have a couple of her jewelry pieces and I absolutely love them, but I don't wear them often. And I just thought I would put this on today. This is a store-bought sweater. I don't know why I'm not wearing any knits today. I just didn't feel like it. So, um, okay. So today's episode, I have, um, no finished objects for you today. Unfortunately, I do have a couple of works in progress, three knitting works in progress, one sewing work in progress. Uh, I'm going to talk about a future craft I'm going to get into uh, just a few yarn purchases and a special package I received in the mail from a podcast viewer. Let me share that later. And let's go ahead and get started with the knitting. So I'm working on a couple of things this week, or have been the last few weeks, because it's been a few weeks since the last time I put a video up. Um... I recently got some very cool Christmas inspired yarn from a company called Moon Rover Sock. No, Moon Rover Yarns. And this is the label. It's on the wild base. The colorway is Old Timey Tree. And uh, I believe this dyer is out of California. And I saw the yarn on Instagram, because I follow her on Instagram. She doesn't have a shop full of yarn. Um, she does throw up, occasionally, listings for made-to-order yarns. And 
that's what I had done. So when this was all done, she she dyes a big batch of it and then mails it out. So I just love it so much. It's perfect. It's so Christmassy. Sorry about that. Joe called uh, from school to tell me how bored he is. <laughs> So the snow was predicted starting yesterday and they got all the teachers up in arms and thinking it was going to be a snow day today. And I said, you jinxed yourself when you told the kids yesterday, he told the kids, have a great Christmas. I'm sure I'm not going to see you tomorrow because it's probably going to be a snow day. I'm like, you jinxed yourself because sure enough, they had to go to school. So he's at school and he's showing, uh, he's an English teacher, if you don't know that, uh, seventh grade. And he's showing, you know, he was supposed to show a movie today, the a Christmas Carol. But I guess the he was going to do it on YouTube and the YouTube video was all wonky, so he couldn't, I don't know. So I, I guess he's just throwing a study hall. I don't know. Anyway. Back to my socks. So this is, I like this yarn. It's a nice beefy sock yarn. I feel like it's almost a sport weight, really. And um, the sock pattern that I am doing is more a, it's a free download on Ravelry. And it's, um, it's called the slip stitch sock I think so it basically just gives you a general idea of the slip stitch pattern and how to do it and then you can put in your own toe and own heel or whatever you want to do so it gives you suggestions um so it's a really fun pattern this is the top of the foot as you can see here here's where I am and this I did a German short row heel, which is recommended in the pattern. Or a short row heel is recommended in the pattern. I found a great tutorial on YouTube for how to do a German show, short row heel um, from Carmen of the... Oh my gosh. I should have show notes. I don't. Um... What is her podcast? It's so great. Carmen, Carmen, she's from the Netherlands. I'll put it on the screen here for you so you can look her up. She has several really great sock tutorials. I recommend them. Um, so I did this heel and actually really liked it a lot. It was very, very easy and memorizable. I think I'll be able to do that again. And I really don't mind the way it fits at all. Um, although I do like the look of a heel flap a little bit better, but so as you can see, uh, you start the slip stitch pattern around the back of the leg after you get done with the heel. And I don't think I'm going to do these really tall. I think maybe another inch of the pattern before I get do the ribbing, just because I feel like they might get kind of tight on the leg. On my leg, anyway. <laughs> um, so that is one sock. And as you can see, I am pulling the yarn from this ball from the center and from the exterior. And this happens to be from the exterior. And this happens to be from the interior. And you can see a slight difference in, in the, um, the coloring. But regardless, they're fantastic. They're just a little bit slow going. Uh, and I'm doing these on Magic Loop because I felt like it would be easier. I don't know. I may switch over to a nine inch. I have my nine inch right here. I may try to do some of it on a nine inch. We'll see, I don't know. So I'm just trying to get through this first sock and then I will go ahead and get going on the leg of this sock. So the heel is all set on this. I'm kind of knitting them concurrently and um, 
else do I want to say? Really great pattern. Toe up is my preference. I really like toe up. And I've got a cat in here. He's very interested in why this box is here. And if he starts chewing in on it, I'm going to be mad. If you have cats, do your cats chew on cardboard? I don't know. I should just let them do it. I mean, there's really no harm in it. They're not eating it. They're just chewing on it. But the sound of it is like nails on a chalkboard for me. I cannot deal. Do not start chewing on that box. Come on. Go lay down. This isn't for you. I might have to put this up because... <laughs> There are boxes everywhere. Sorry. <laughs> Love my cats. They're so good. He's looking at the table. He wants to jump up here. So I might get a visit from him. But So that's my work in progress number one. And I'm keeping that in this adorable little basket bag from... This was a birthday gift from Nancy of the Round Rabbit podcast. And it's perfect for socks. Number two. Oh, I forgot to bring something in. The figures. All right, I'll, I'll go over this one first and then I will talk about... I will go grab my other one. Um, last minute gift knitting. <laughs> I wasn't going to do any, and then, I don't know. I just feel like my brother would really appreciate a hat. So I'm knitting my brother a hat. I'm using this gorgeous blue yarn. This is, um, I better just go get. I'm knitting it out of this beautiful yarn from Blue Moon Fiber Arts. And here's the label. This is discontinued, which is a shame because it's really, really nice. Uh, I got this so long ago, back when I was buying yarn, I wanted to figure, I wanted to see what Yak was all about. So the Yaksi is a blend of wool and silk and Yak fiber. And the colorway is Kate's Blue. So it's coming off real purple. I'm hoping it's not too purple. If I'll finish the hat, and if it's not right, I will try to maybe knit something else for him. I'm not going to see him until next weekend, so I have a little bit of time, and hats don't take that long. So I found a great pattern on Ravelry. It's a paid-for pattern by the dyer behind Yoth Yarns. And... Um, it's called the Rutherford, the Rutherford. Yeah, and it's through Tolt Yarn and Wool. Um, but the designer is Veronica jo Job, I think that's her name. So, um, let's see if I have the ability to show you the picture of the hat. That's an eyelet row, and I don't know if that's really feminine or not, but what happens is it creates the hat, it gives the hat the ability to fold up a little bit easier, I think, with all that ribbing, and um, that's it on a man, and I, I actually don't mind the look of it. They have it on the um, Revelry page shown both the women and the man and the woman wearing the, uh, the hat this way. And I don't mind it. I think it looks nice. What do you think? Do you think that is too feminine? I really tried to find something that was masculine and you get a lot of hat options when you do a search on Ravelry. So anyway, here's what I have so far. So just the beginning of the bottom rib and that there is a twisted rib. You might be asking yourself, Lori, why on earth would you knit 
a ribbed hat when you don't like to knit rib? <laughs> That's a good question. Because when you see my next project, you're going to ask that again. <laughs> I don't know. I figure might as well just do it. Nothing to it but to do it. And I figure I'll get quicker at it as I go. So this really isn't that bad. The whole hat is this rib. I, I did the eyelet row this morning. And that was a little fiddly because there was some purling through the vag loops, which I know is not anyone's favorite thing. But um, if I like it, I might just keep it. It's really kind of a nice color. Um, I'm keeping this in my Eldenwood craft bag with the woodland creatures because you can't, I can't get enough woodland creatures. Just can't. Especially that owl. Oh my gosh. Hopefully that won't take too long. I'm going to take it with me to Christmas on my Christmas break and that'll give me something to do and yeah. So my third work in progress is the Roxborough Shawl by Baby Cocktails. Can you see that? It's not a great picture. Let me see. Here. So it's a ribbed shawl, guys. <laughs> Yeah, doing all the ribbing. Me and all the ribbing. So here it is so far. It's actually really nice knit. Like, uh, it's very... Rhythmic. I like it. Right now, it's what I like. So, it's got these really cool lace columns that almost have the look of cable but it's not it's lace it's really easy and then it's got a two by one rib 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 rib, rib. and it looks nice on the back side too so it's not looking very big I'm on the second column, so I mean, I don't have too much more to go, as you can see here. But the thing with the ribbing is that it should block out. It's like gonna be like that. So, yeah. Oh, this yarn is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I bought this from the yarn store in Syracuse. And I can't recall the name of the shop at the moment. But, um,. The yarn is Blue Sky Fibers, and it's really nice. It's an alpaca and merino blend. It's got a little bit of a halo. It's so nice and soft, and I think this is going to just be really nice and cozy, and I like this pink color a lot. So that there is my second work in or third work in progress and I'm not keeping this in a bag it's just on the couch because it's kind of big and I don't have a bag I need I need more bucket style bags I have my heart set on another Jenna Rose bucket bag so I hope I hope to buy one of those again again soon because I really like them they're just perfect to just have next to you on the couch and you can just plop your big project in there. Um, somebody asked me recently how I go about choosing um, projects. And that's such a good question. I, you know, it really depends on my mood that day. It's easy to get really kind of overwhelmed because you can either search on Ravelry for a project for a specific yarn or you can just search for a specific project and either way you get thousands and thousands of options and um, 
I seem to gravitate more towards projects that are a little bit less of the mainstream. Um, you know what I mean? Like I tend to want to knit things that not everyone else is knitting. <laughs> so that's how I found these three projects. I am not seeing anybody knitting any of these projects. Um, I mean, there is good things about that because you watch a lot of podcasts, you're going to see projects and think, and you know, people will talk you into doing certain things. Uh, I just feel like everybody's knitting Hohi Locatelli, everybody's knitting Andrea Mowry, everybody's knitting Jared Flood, um, Michelle Huang, like they're all great patterns and that's why people gravitate toward them. So that's, that's that. I mean, as far as types of projects, I I look at the time frame. How long do I want to be knitting this? How much yarn do I have for this project? How um, do I, am I feeling cables? A lot of times, no. Um, and that's why I'm not working on that poor cable sweater that I started <laughs> several months ago. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I try to just feel like what kind of a project do I feel like. Typically I wouldn't want to knit all that ribbing, but for some reason that monotonous uh, purling and knitting is kind of what my brain wants right now. And I think it's just because it's Christmas time and this time and holiday and we're going to be traveling and it's snowing and the Christmas gift buying is stressful. So like all that stuff going on in my head, I feel like I don't want a lot of stuff to think about. So I want simple projects. I want like slip stitches and simple ribbing with very easy four row repeat lace. And um, just a basic hat. I. I definitely feel like I'm going to be knitting more hats in the very, very near future because when I was looking for my brother's hat pattern, I ended up favoriting like eight <laughs> different hats for myself. So um, look forward to seeing more hats in my future podcasts, which is good. I, I like knitting hats. They're very fast and Very fast, actually. I can usually knit a hat within three days, but this particular one I probably won't just because I'm working on a couple of other things that I want to get done. I really wanted to get those socks done by Christmas, but it doesn't look like that's happening. Um, future knitting plans. I got a message from my BFF from high school who asked me if I was selling the socks that I had been making, and I said no. Uh, why do you want some? And she's like, yeah, I want you to knit me some size. I'll send you the, I'll send you the yarn. So I said, okay, what size are, what size are you these days? And she's like, a 12. <laughs> a 12. <laughs> Rosie, if you're watching this, I don't mind. It's just going to take me some time. That's all. So I'm thinking of doing a 70, 72 stitch sock, which is, um, a little bit larger and I'll just have to knit, a, you know, an inch and a half to two inches longer than what I normally make for myself. I mean, I'm used to knitting big socks. I have big feet. I wear a size 10. So you know what I'm saying? So she sent me the yarn. This is the yarn she sent me. It's Red Heart. It's a uh, heart and soul with aloe. Not sure what that means. Let's see what the content is. Just, the colorway is Faded Jeans, by the way. Made in Italy. Uh -huh. Italian. Um, so I guess it's just wool and aloe. I don't know. They don't, they, it feels like a nice hard wearing sock yarn. And 
the picture indicates that they will be a little bit stripey. And I'm assuming that she wants this for the heels, toes, and cuffs. So I hope to start those um, very soon. I don't know that I'll wait until after I'm done with mine. I may cast them on and just keep them on my nine inch circulars or buy. I'm gonna probably be near a yarn store in the next few days. I think that's why I don't have a lot of sock works in progress on the needles all the time. I usually just have one because I don't have that many sock needles, yo. Like I have um, the magic loop ones that I'm working on these are Almost read that. Why did I make that so hard to read? These are, um, what are these? I wish I could read that. That doesn't even have the maker's name on it. I want to say Nova Platina. I think that's what these are. Nova Platinas. And I actually really like them a lot. Um, I might like them even more than the Chow Goo needles that I have. I have one of these on a Chow Goo needle. No, I have them both on my Nova Platinas because I switched. Because I like these a lot. They're just... You know what I want to try is the Eddie Sock Rockets. I haven't ever tried those before. But anyway, um, I have those. I have a long... Uh, chow Gu. I have a couple of Chow Gu size ones. And then I have two 9 inch circulars. One is Nova Patina and one is Chow Gu. So that's why I don't I don't have like tons of sock whips because I don't have tons of sock needles. But uh, so those there are going to be for Rosie very soon. And I'm keeping the, this project in a Jenna Rose zipper pouch. I love this fabric so much. I love her bags so much. Um, okay, so 23 minutes. Okay, um, I'm going to talk real quick about a sewing work in progress. I found this pattern on SoTech. Sotek Handmade blog. Um, Svetlana is the designer. And I've made quite a few of her projects. She has really great, really great sewing patterns. I recommend them. And she had a free pattern on her blog for a wall a pouch. And here is the essential idea of what this is going to look like. Pocket, pocket. And at the top, there'll be riveted eyelets. And this will be all bound and everything. Um, the problem I'm having is I'm using this flex foam. This is a Pellon, Pellon product that I got at Joanne Fabrics. And you're supposed to use this instead of interfacing. And you and it it's not an iron on type of situation. <laughs> it doesn't have that iron on ability. So instead, I have to use quilting basting spray. And as you can see, it doesn't work very well on this foam. So, not really digging that. It's the only gripe I have about this project. Um, this will have binding on it also, and the bottom will have binding on it, but the pockets will be lined. I made another one. I'll see if I can insert a picture here for you so you can see. Um, I'm gifting this to my stepfather. So that's why I don't have it to show you because it's wrapped up like right here. And his has a bear, a bear print. 
Um, I just love this lemon print so much and I've been hoarding it. It came in a fat quarter package. I lately have been falling down the fabric uh, rabbit hole on Etsy looking at all the different fabrics. Oh, there's some really good ones out right now that I want. But I cannot spend any more money. I cannot. So, um, I'll just go ahead and show you. So I think that that pouch thing is going to be for me. So I will show that when it's finished on the next podcast. Um, I, I mentioned last time I recorded a video that I have been kind of buying myself stuff lately uh, and <laughs> this is some of that what you're gonna see here is some of that yarn so sock yarn this I got at webs because I ordered this along with a sock ruler which I don't have here to show you but you know what that looks like it's a rounded thing with measurements on it and you can measure your sock as you're knitting it um, but I can't order anything from webs and not order yarn, what? So this is what I picked out. I love it so much. I cannot wait for these. This is winter sock yarn. I mean, this is nice and rustic-y stuff. I've never heard of this company before. Well, that looks like it's German. And it's got aloe. And jojoba oil. Jojoba oil. <laughs> um, 420 meters. So it's probably around 400 yards of yarn. I love that color though. Is that coming across okay? It's got blue and teal and brown and cream and ivory. Gosh, love it. The next two yarns I'm going to show you so good. Try not to be too jealous. If I could be dis all right, now that's more of this. When I saw this yarn on Instagram and I got to the store and it was still available, I just about died. <laughs> this is House of Alla Mode. I've ordered from her before. Awesome, awesome colorways and this is no exception. All right, first of all, green is my favorite. This is so nice and wintry and the speckles in this is just awesome. So this is um, house fingering two ply 400 yards and this is Nordic the Stardust collection. The Stardust collection has a lot of little speckles like this. excited about that. I can't even tell you. This, if I could be described as a skein of yarn, it would be this. Muted, rainbowy colors just like this. This is fiber for the people. And the colorway is Lights Through the Trees, 400 yards. And this is Taylor's favorite, which is a 80-20 merino nylon blend. And this is on her two-ply. She did um, some on Stellina for this recent uh, update. And that is beautiful, too. My God, I want all of her colorways. They're so beautiful. But I have... Um, it's funny, I should have brought them down, but I have yarns, two other skeins of yarn like this, but in varying shades. So I have one that's really dark, and then I have one that's a medium, and then this is probably the lightest of the three. So, I mean, they could literally be a fade. What? That would be. This I also bought. This was one of her, um, 
I, just like experimentation color ways, I think. Um, she calls this spruce. This is on Taylor's favorite, which is again, 80-20, 400 yards, two ply. And the color is just perfect. They do look nice together. They do. Um, if you haven't bought any of Taylor's yarn yet, what are you waiting for? It's amazing. It's one of my top favorites right now, for sure. Uh, the last thing I bought is for a new craft that I want to get into trying. Uh, and you've seen it all over. It's, my inspiration came from Buku, who does the bags. And I want one so bad. Someday I will have one of her bags. But she is doing punch needle. And she actually was the one that told me about the Oxford punch needle. So I started following Amy Oxford on Instagram and found out when she had an update and snagged one. So I only got one so far. They come, I would have loved to buy the whole set of all the sizes because I too tend to get carried away uh, with a new craft, but um, I only got the number 14. So this is one eighth inch. And here it is. It's nice. It feels nice in your hand. These are handmade. And unfortunately, this is all I have so far. <laughs> I mean, this, I still need a frame, monk's cloth, or some sort of cloth. Um, She's been putting out great, great YouTube videos. So I have high hopes. Eventually, I'm going to be rug hooking something. Something, something. Came with this cute little booklet and a little stitch gauge. Measurer. And I'm really excited. It's going to be so fun. I just, I just have to start buying the things I need little by little. So I've got it. I'm ready. I just need to either have Joe build me a frame or buy a frame or, or buy a hoop or one of those things you need for that thing and the monk's cloth and I have a lot of yarn. That's part of the reason I bought that is because I think it'll be great to use up leftover yarns. Right? I mean, um, so let me just take that back out again and show you that the number 14 is good for fine yarn. It makes one eighth inch loops. Um, and that's the smallest. There's a little gauge on the back here. Another popular size is the 10, and that makes one quarter inch loops. So for the 14, it says, fine yarns such as worsted, sport weight, sock weight, or baby weight yarns. Perfect, I have a lot of that, so. Um, it's exciting. Okay, last thing I want to talk about is a beautiful package that I recently received from a podcast viewer. Her name is Catherine, and she sent me a message and said many, many lovely things about my podcast. Thank you. I uh, got a message from her. She asked me if she could send me some things and she did send me some things <laughs> she sent me a beautiful little package i probably should have waited to open it and opened it on christmas because it was like christmas when i opened it 
And I'm just going to show you a few things in here. Um, some washi tape, which I use all the time, especially on my packages that I mail out. Lip balm. Look how cute those are. Oh, she knows I love owls, so. When you write with this, look what happens. <laughs> I think and love that. And she sent me some friendship bracelets that she made herself. Each have like a little explanation of how to use it, what it's, what's, what she made it with. The, and then she sent me these little accordion, oh my gosh, I just saw this now. This is um, an accordion envelope business card holder. And she hand folded, hand assembled, and delightfully hand cut the Lorelei Erdo jewelry owl for my logo on each one. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Let me close this so I can show you what it looks like. What? Are you kidding? Look how cute that is. That's my owl. So this, um, and she sent me four of them. And each one is the little bracelets that she made. So here it is all. So it looks like it's um, knitted or crocheted, I think. Wait, what does it say on here? Crochet, macrame, and beading. So there's little beads. And to tighten this up, you pull these beads. That is so stinking cute. I can't even. I can't even. So I have a few of those. Each one's a little bit different, but they're all my favorite color. And kind of where I'm stacked, which is awesome. And they'll look really cute worn with other bracelets I have. She wrote me a gorgeous little note and look at that card. <laughs> Two black cats. Hello. And oh she sent me some like slip-on bangles. I guess I'm showing you everything. There's a teal one. She sent More bracelets, oh my goodness. Some beads, oh my goodness. And, you guys, oh my gosh. First of all, let me show you. It's in here. She repurposed little Christmas lights and put a little loop on the end so you can attach them to an earring wire or to a bracelet or whatever. How clever is that? Can you even see? There. So she sent those to me in a this little beautiful handmade knit pouch. Here's another one. This one was wrapped up a little bit different. How did she do it? It was kind of like that maybe. This one has little, these man are so awesome. S seed beaded tubes. These can go into jewelry designs. 
I don't know if you know how long it takes to make a seed beaded tube. It takes a long, long, long time. Like, there is a lot of work in these. Floored, I'm telling you. I was floored. There are other uh, little seed beaded jewelry components. She sent little rings, little figure eights. Little links. These are really sweet. And they're like in little bags. All little baggies. All little bags. Catherine, you're the best. See being rings. And there's like a lot of them, like a lot, a lot of them. So I think I showed them all to you. Did I show you these? Where are the figure eights? Oh yeah, these. These are the figure eights. So I'm looking forward to playing around with those in my jewelry designs. I think they are going to be really, really cool. They are. And they're just, it was just such a nice gift. I can't even tell you. I am um, so grateful that people are so kind. And she said such great things about my podcast. And it was just really nice. And I just, I love it. So, thank you so much. This was the nicest package I've ever gotten. Seriously. So nice. All right, Cassius, I think that's it. Is that it? Did you want to say hi to the people? Come here. He's always in the mix, you know? Say hi! Say hi, total peoples! Booty. Booty. He's like, oh, okay, this is cool. I'll just hang out here. <laughs> um, Alright, that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a wonderful Christmas. I will see you in a few weeks and hopefully have lots of new things to show you and um, some finished objects, hopefully. And um, if any of you uh, have plans of starting to do the punch needle thing, let me know. Maybe we'll do like a punch needle along. How fun would that be? I have all kinds of plans, but let's see if any of them happen. I don't know. Um, anyway, it was so nice to sit and chat with you. If you want to see more of my stuff online, I am on Ravelry at Lorelei Erdo. I'm on Etsy at Lorelei Erdo Jewelry .etsy .com. I have a website that's Lorelei Erdo .com. I have a blog. I don't write on it very much, but it's lorelei1141.blogspot.com. I am on Instagram at Lorelei Erdo. So feel free to follow me at all the places. And if you like this podcast, uh, please give me a thumbs up. It will make my podcast uh, more accessible to other people. Oh, hi. <laughs> and excuse me. Hello. Um, no, you can't sit there. Uh, and leave a comment. Please leave a comment because I really love to connect with my viewers on a more personal level. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys in a few weeks. Bye!